Welcome to the Bridges of Meaning European Community. And uh, today um, you're going to listen to my conversation with uh, René. Uh, René is from Cologne, Germany. He's a new member to the BOM um, Discord. And uh, we're going to discuss how he got to this corner of the internet, um, how he discovered and the festival. And then we're going to cover the topics of the importance of listening and attention. And uh, afterward, we were going to talk about uh, different. Um, what what is what are the, is the crowd of people who going uh, who is bridges of meaning, um, relatively to the geography, to the culture, uh, and how it influenced the people we have in the Discord and in our community in general. And this topic is very close at heart to me as um, a very foreigner member of the community and kind of an outlier so I, i'm very interested in that and uh, once again i highly recommend you to listen to our conversation in higher speed and you can do that by changing the settings of the youtube video uh, thank you very much and enjoy excellent okay recording is progress seems like it's in progress <laughs> excellent i would still prefer my obs but uh but sure like that let's fine. see if it works out afterwards you can tell me if it's any good probably Zoom option. Not. probably not why do you want it to organize in your room your room looks like perfect with the books <laughs> and and the, and the mandala and the bright sun <laughs> that shining in the room like i don't know you you've been following that peterson advice like i, I can see that <laughs> and they also made it beautiful as you can see yeah i see the plant a bit of chaos in the background <laughs> <laughs> i actually didn't the plant is the only thing that they're uh, missing in my room that's the only thing that i hadn't introduced uh, i think it does very much i think it's it's uh it's a whole different uh what do you say like um it it makes the room look so different the plant yes yes even if it's small i have some some very small ones uh over here too on the shelf and uh it adds it adds a lot i think even though yeah. it's just you know Green. maybe maybe, I, maybe i'll do that maybe, maybe i'll add something yeah i was thinking about it this week so maybe i'll add something i'll, I'll need to choose something i hate ca cactuses and uh, but it's very popular to put them inside the house in israel but probably not a cactus i hate them uh, i see that you're sitting with a hoodie uh which like it's is it cold Yes. Uh, yes it's called remind no, me where I mean, are you from it, what what do you mean cold Did i don't like, i don't uh, know like uh, for me everything uh, below 20 is cold but remind me where are you from you're from netherlands or germany cologne germany cologne germany okay okay so yes so, so for you for you yeah you're like something like four hours away from the um, festival something like that right something like that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I've already uh, got the carpool uh, opportunity, so I'm very happy for that, uh, with some Dutch people, I guess, or Belgium. Hope I'm not mistaken here, but they will uh, survive that. <laughs> um, uh, René, are you, are you going to the meeting uh, in, uh, in the Netherlands? No. No, no you don't. I, know. I, I mean, I haven't thought about it so far, but uh, I guess um, uh, the London meeting will suffice for now. At the London meeting, you're going to Landau, London. Landau. Ah, Landau. So sorry, it's Landau. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I was speaking with uh, Dennis yesterday, and uh, he said that, well, he's from Netherlands, so he's going to the Netherlands, and then after that, they're going to Landau. So we'll so do it. So it's before that. Yeah, it's two days before. It's on the 24th, I think. Oh, exactly. so that wouldn't work out, anyways. Unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, but I'm really excited. I'm I'm really happy that this uh, happened. I was so excited when I saw it in the in the bomb uh, channel, some some general chat. I actually I joined um, the Discord just a couple of days ago because I was actually looking for the symbolic word Discord, but I couldn't find any because it's not public. And then I uh, happened to, to stumble upon the um, bomb Discord, and then I saw the. The message by Matthias, um, 
that yeah, you know, festival in Germany, I was like, what, Germany? And this uh, corner, it's so unusual because everything is, you know, USA and Canada and I don't know, perhaps uh, Britain, Australia, but all in the Anglosphere. Mm -hmm. So I was a bit uh, positively surprised that yeah. uh, something is related to Germany or at least something a little bit closer to to Europe. Yeah. And um, how, how you how you came uh, came across this corner and when? So I, I, as I understand, you are a relatively new member here, at least in the in the um, in the like participation point, uh, 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 like the being in in the Discord and and trying to meet people. Um, yeah. So I've so been... how how did yeah how you came here? I've been active on the um, Awakening from the Mini Crisis Discord for a while now. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah, that was a little bit too... <laughs> what <laughs> drove you to the uh, Awakening from the Mini Crisis? Like uh, how you came here? Like uh, oh, in general, uh, in general, mm. it's like uh, it's wow, a journey wow, of a few a years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> what so, a so story. please. Oh my gosh. Okay, okay. I guess um, like the very beginning is somewhere around uh, 2014, 15, um, when I so I met a guy who is very extroverted, uh, and I I'm not. <laughs> So I find that very fascinating. We got along very well and it started to develop that I asked myself, why is that? How does this work, so to speak? Like, uh, you know, getting along with people so well, how does he do that? And why is it not that I cannot do that? Um, and then I, we talked very deeply uh, very often and then I got into this whole personal development thing um, also online you know all these guru types um, that emerged last decade and these you know what I'm talking about like these Simon Sinek kind of people Gary Vaynerchuk and all this but um, very soon it started to grow on me that this is a very, I don't know, didn't suffice really. It's a bit of a superficial approach, um, especially retrospectively. I look at it and think it's like, I don't know. It's it's a good way to start thinking about these things, personal development and all this, but I don't know. It's It doesn't come to a conclusion, so to speak. Yeah. Um, so I guess that's why I stumbled upon, um, John Peterson videos, because that was kind of, yeah, 2017, 18 or something, um, when the algorithm, algorithm pushed that, uh, fancy man to yeah. the fore. And, uh, yeah, I... I, um, and, fr and from 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 Jordan, how you discovered uh, John Vaveki? Yeah, so well, I don't even know B because I I, think, I, I, I was because... introduced to John Vaveki only when they spoke a year ago. I think so too. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. I've heard the name before on a documentary that um, by uh, Kurt Jamunga. So he did that documentary, Better Left Unsaid. Um, when does the left go too far or something like yeah. that? Yeah. Yep. And uh, he did an interview with, a, I don't even know with whom, but um, the, the name John Laveki was dropped there, was mentioned mm. there, but I didn't understand the name because, you know, my something is sometimes uh, if they mumble the native speakers, I cannot understand them. And Laveki is a very unusual name. So I was like, Who's that? <laughs> John Maveki. And uh, then I actually, asked, that was so funny, I asked in the comments and then later I discovered John Maveki on my own and then sometime again I got the reply, oh, it's John Maveki. I now know, my friend. Um, yeah, I, I, watch, I started to watch the series but um, didn't really finish it. It's a lot of, lot of material. To where, where, where did you stop? Quite in the beginning. 
quite a beginner. Um, you, you remember what yeah. I, I, I managed to go, I think the fifth lecture, he finished uh, to, uh, yeah, to speak so. about the Buddha. And I think I stopped somewhere around there. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so um, the lectures I didn't go very far. Some like three or something. Like not, not a not lot. Even, not even, not, not even that. Yeah. Because I couldn't. Like it was just too much information. Really, I can't. I, it's. I don't know. I feel like if he's talking, it's like he drops a name or a reference every two sentences, and I'm like, whoa! I need to it's deal with that first, man. Like, um, I, I, I think as an introductionary um, videos, those are really bad. I think right now, when you already a year in uh, part of the community and part of this conversation and part of those. Uh, jargon that he uh, used i think it will be easier I, i'm i'm actually speaking to myself like teddy you should revisit it maybe it will be get better <laughs> because yeah, because, uh, yeah. Yeah, and, and from that you, you discovered John and uh, the conversation that john had with uh, paul uh, this is how you got uh, um to know about the bridges of meaning community and paul so Vandekai. i, I Actually, I don't even know where I know Paul from because I never followed him really. Um, mm. um, because I don't know, I I didn't I didn't get his role. I didn't know what he was about with his videos. Um, I think you tried to describe it in in a, the um, conversation you had with Matthias 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 uh, what the yeah, what I, what, Let's whatever say function is. Yeah, uh, what the function is. Yeah. Uh, so so Paul is kind of like a commentator, right? I guess I don't know. I, no, he he more bring the community together. Like he brings people to. Uh, Paul yeah, he is has this outside kind of view, like not 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 as yeah. if he was completely detached from everything, but but it's like. Um, he he brings this uh, meta level to it, like he's. But but those are just the videos, and though those are much less important, they are they are accumulating a lot of views. But uh, the the biggest contribution that I think Paul had is to is with the random conversations, because the random conversations started the Discord channel, and then all the small sub channels under the this umbrella is this corner those people start to speak with each other and develop their own channels and develop their own like community and th then there is like a force from the community for john to speak with uh, with the Pe peugeot and uh, like viveki and paul and peugeot all of them it's it's actually a push from the community for them to meet uh, but the community itself started yeah i'm sure there's there's the community around john Raveki and uh, and jonathan pajot but but paul contributed a lot through his random conversations because then See, i he, never got to saw that because i didn't follow him i guess yeah that's yeah, why that's, i don't know about it yeah and and they are they are excellent uh because they are the random conversations is this is exactly what we are doing right now and uh, basically but more or less uh, because paul is the celebrity and everybody knows about him and about he don't need to talk about himself so it's basically he interviewing or having a conversation with the other person um and through the personal stories of all the people of the community you get to idea what everybody's having gone through and we we noticed there's two polarities the people who grew up in hard christian background with a lot of like those those like really harsh christian ideas uh, and they became and after went to university became aloof to that and decided to leave the, the church and then jordan peterson start to bring them back and the other side is the, the people like me people like dennis uh, is people who grew up secular uh, like his really 
bad idea about religion in general because it's like um, ideas for stupid people and <laughs> and and, and so, yeah so we decide like so, so and and that kind of journey is a little bit different for us than the people who deconstruct the faith and then uh, do something else with it so those are big like chunks of different people who we noticed uh, are interested in in the in being active in the community that was more or less created by this outcry of jordan peterson mm -hmm. uh, so, something like that yeah that's but, also my impression from what i've heard so far that's pretty much these two stories yeah and um and yeah you we uh, like first of all your uh journey sounds quite close to mine um because i i had something similar uh, i think i'm a little bit older i'm in the, my late 30s uh, and you're probably in your 20s right <laughs> yeah so i'm a little bit older so i i met this guy uh, <laughs> 10 years before you <laughs> Uh, I, I started to I started university in the age of 21 22 22 yeah after the military and um, and the, yeah I was like I was super unsuccessful with friends with women and like what what the hell do you do and uh, I met this guy and he was like a short Jew <laughs> who are amazing with women and like okay like what 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 is going on here what 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 what's happening and then we start to being we became friends and i learned a lot from him and i because i have a lot of um academic not academic but bookish tendencies i start to read a lot uh, those books of all the pickup artists and different techniques and different ideas and different approaches and i read quite a lot uh, from that community um but i rem and 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 i remember the phrase from the maybe the main book of the pickup community is it's called the game uh, by neil strauss neil strauss is a writer from uh, uh, the rolling stones and he wrote the, the book called the game and in the end of the book it's about different people who coming together living in hollywood and picking up women and there's like advices small advices in there but more, overall it's it's a story but in the end he's saying it's it's not enough and some of the members sorry went, it's what not enough oh, uh, okay. and some of the members went to um to buddhism to different like traditional more religion and approaches and try to find the some the, the the missing parts in that um and yeah and for me it was something like that so after the pickup community i was depressed and horribly uh, for many many years three or four years during the 2010 uh, but for me uh, it was a different algorithm uh, and this different algorithm, I was really into Alan Watts and a lot of, uh, uh, a little bit of Terence McKenna. And because I was listening to them, the algorithm of, uh, it was the YouTube algorithm before, it wasn't even a YouTube, it was a program that advise that give you suggestions for websites. Um, it was even before YouTube got bought by, by Google. And uh, they gave me Joe Rogan. Uh, uh, so I, I remember started listening to Joe Rogan on episode 120, something like that. And uh, I was... That's quite some time ago. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I but remember... now like thousand... Uh, and I remember thinking about... to myself, oh, I really like this Joe Rogan, but like he has already 120 episodes. I will never catch up. <laughs> I remember Imagine. thinking I remember thinking that and stupid as I am uh, I of course are listened to all of the beginnings few times uh, and I listened to probably until the episode 1200 I listened to all of them like religiously wow. all of them some of them many of them few times 
like until the uh, the episode 800 something uh, just before John Peterson I listened to them two times or something uh, I just like just uh, put them on and just went with my my life um and he hey he actually ga- gave me this missing piece of uh, uh of it's not just about hitting with uh, on women it's also about having a more coherent lifestyle uh, so it's uh, it's exercise and it's nutrition and it's uh, um having friends having uh, hobbies having like uh, a wholesome life um but so so that's jo- what jo- what uh, joe rogan gave to me and after i discovered jordan peterson i was on those two two sides but the funny thing is is that then after b- half a year ago when i decided to give and the religion much more weight. And I gave Paul and the Bridges of Meaning community much more, um, pa- a, a bigger part in my life. I've, I noticed that I stopped listening to Joe Rogan. And for me, it's quite a shock. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's seriously, because uh, think about it. He was in my head for 10 years, every single day. So right now to be in a situation that I don't have any interest or need to listen to his new conversation with people that I really like, I just, I have no interest. I, I know Joe Rogan opinion about most of the things in life. <laughs> and yeah, it just, it, and 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 so he, what are, so what what do you what do you do with that what what's what is your what do you think about that about that about the fact that i stopped about Sh- this uh okay what now like there's this uh, void or something well, how no does it- no that's that's exactly it if there were a void i would have returned but it's there's no void okay so I listen to other podcasts, uh, a lot of, uh, of Paul, Paul Van de Clay, uh, Sam Peugeot, uh, lately a lot of burn power, but um, I don't know, my life became very full from different other activities, so I don't have that much time to listen to Joe Rogan. I read much more, I write much more, I have do- the conversation like we have right now. I have like preparation for book club. I have, uh, um, during the corona, I started a conversation with friends. Uh, so I like have a weekly co- philosophical conversation, like three hours grueling, like about Marxism or about something else, <laughs> like difficult stuff. And every single week, every single week. So those kind of activities um, replaced all the YouTube and and podcast consumption. I, I still consume quite a lot, but much, much less. Um, and, and that's just the interesting effect that the, the community of Bridges of Meaning had on me personally. Yes, and I mean, that is quite what is the purpose of it isn't it like this um getting away from passive consumption and going into the active um participation yeah Uh, that's yeah that's so great what why are you so excited about the festival (laughs) you said like i was like i i saw the smile and the giddiness but like Please expand on that. <laughs> Why are you so well, excited well, about f- it? First of all, because it's it's um, it's uh, the first time that I think that this, let's say, little corner is um, a little bit more relatable than usual because it is closer, um, physically closer, because uh, otherwise it just happens uh, all in the Anglosphere. And even then it's only virtual. So you have double closeness, so to speak. Um, uh, yeah, and I'm excited to meet the people as well. I just um, yesterday started. Uh, um, I had the first conversation on the Discord um, 
some you will meet tomorrow I find. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah Stefan. it was fun uh, no no um, Tim Cattio oh right 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 yeah. I, yeah, um, I have to, whoa I have a two tomorrow okay <laughs> <laughs> busy discord man um, and yeah so it's very exciting I think um I just did this, I don't know, two weeks or something. I've been here and I looked around the channels. It's uh, really cool. Like uh, people mentioning, I don't know, just recently someone uh, screenshotted a, or took a photo of a, a magazine, an uh, article in a magazine. And that was interesting because it related to something that we discussed earlier. And um, then the whole conversation spun out of this. And it's, I don't know, it's, it's just nice. <laughs> it's just yeah. very nice to have this, this uh, common, I don't know, interest or sphere in which you kind of dabble and uh, everybody brings um, their own idiosyncrasies to it and you learn from each other. And you, it's also what I've noticed, a lot of people here are just uh, really they intently listen, you know, and this is so rare. And I've noticed this um, because I do this kind of um, intuitively myself. If I meet anyone, I just, I'm just really curious about what they are saying and why they're saying it and what, you know, what's their thing. And um, a lot of times I get this reaction like, wow, that's so nice that you listen and you really react to uh, what I'm saying and not just some superficial like script that you just uh, play. And I'm like, yeah, of course. <laughs> like For me, it's kind of, I don't want to, I don't want to seem like I'm bragging here, but it's, it's, it's really obvious that um, uh, this is lacking. Yeah. That's, this is lacking uh, in a lot of uh, places in the world right now apparently unfortunately um and just this this intently listening and just um opening yourself towards this space that you create as a um yeah as a diet or perhaps with even more people and you're just there you know you're not i don't know checking your phone or thinking about this other thing that happened or will happen or is happening or whatever. No, you're there with this person and you're talking about this thing and, I don't know, learning about their story, about what they are up to, what they are interested in, and it's, and you learn something. I guess that's, that is what uh, uh, the Vicky calls Dialogos. I'm not sure, but um, this kind of spirit of... Um, of uh, community mm -hmm. through uh through conversation yeah do you consider yourself a good conversationalist i think i can listen better than i can speak mm. but uh, yeah sometimes need a bit of um uh like a catalyst to you know yeah. some some topic to to catch on to yeah um, I sometimes have trouble thinking up stuff on my own, but once people mention something, I'm like, oh yeah, that reminds me of this and that. When do you think you, uh, you learned it? Uh, when, in what situation? It was, was uh, like how your conversation, you, do you, did you had like a long uh, of conversations with pa your parents or your siblings? And that, that kind of thing, because it's probably coming from the, the home um, and the, the environment that you grew up in. So there is a, probably I, I, the, one of your parents was a, quite a good listener and asked you questions. So you need like to, to, to tell a very difficult idea that you had as a child and related to the, the grown up that standing in front of you on the opposite and so like there's there's a reciprocity between the the child and the parent that teaches us how to do that because it's really difficult to learn as a grown-up so the, i i want to hear like the, do you know where with, with whom or in what specific situation you learned it then um, when you were younger um i definitely 
get something of this from my parents because there was always um but but not explicitly so you know it's not like uh, we sat down and had a less listen uh, a lesson in listening no of course not but, mm, of course not. um but there was kind of implicit that you are if you have a conversation you have a conversation and you're not i don't know uh you know you you uh, one one big thing was um letting the other person speak that was kind of explicit like mm. you're not interrupting you're not uh uh kind of uh forcing yourself on the conversation but you that was kind of that that was the thing i remember yeah so i guess that's kind of um uh, are you from a, pre a religion you're from religious background or no. you're sec secular secular and yeah. you had this you have siblings oh i have a sister yeah the sister yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, you were speaking about this, like uh, that the, in the beginning, that the fact that you are introvert and you're like really good uh, listener, and I just want to tell the story. Um, when I was in university studying philosophy, um, uh, well, I, a few of my friends were in the literature department, and there were a girl there. She was. She was really not impressive, uh, like um, uh, physically. She was li really small, a uh, little bit chubby, uh, really quiet, uh, like the, the, from this bookish type that really uh, read a lot of books, but like didn't speak that much. Uh, but she was very good uh, listener. And she had the capability to, to, to listen, to be in the conversation, to ask good questions and not to, not to lead you with the questions. I, I like to lead somebody with questions, uh, but she was more of an explorer with, with those kind of questions. And she was the most popular girl in this whole school like in this whole department she was like people clanged to her so like she was so valuable and she, she like yeah there's there's she almost didn't speak they they didn't she didn't bring her new ideas her new yeah. like enthusiasm to the world she just listened and she taught me so much about the art of listening, uh, which which is so simple. Just shut up, <laughs> <laughs> just and give the other person his space and space to speak what he has in mind. And uh, it's it's such a valuable thing to have. And this also harkens back, if I may. Um, this also harkens back to something that you said about Joe Rogan, because he his advice with uh, in regards to um, relationships is kind of this: don't approach it from your perspective, like what you want out of the relationship, but rather approach it from the what can you give, what what is what is your role to play here, and um, if you if you approach it from this perspective then it's completely clear that you have to be a person who can offer valuable things i mean everybody is good at something else so that um, this is i guess that's obvious that you don't you don't get the whole package like with every person but i mean if you are a person who can listen very well if you're a person i don't know who's very it kind of is like a, a rock in like tumultuous times or something. If you're a person, I don't know, who's very helpful, like all these different things, then people will naturally cling on to you. It will just happen. No, not necessarily. The, the fact that there is a certain, um, um, like there's certain ter personality traits uh, that is, are in odd with each other and won't necessarily uh you cannot develop this communication a good communication with every single person it's no, i'm not just, talking about the communication not necessarily but possible. i mean that 
in generally, if you can, if you are someone who's um, who can offer something valuable, I guess I, I think that it is like a precondition for a good relationship, and it will it will uh, kind of naturally develop. It might take time. Sure, it's not like uh, oh, you know, I'm just acquired the skill and I'm going out there and like like a magnet, people flying onto me. Like that's not how it works, but yeah yeah that's the no but but you're right there there's something that joe rogan um ad, advice is like you bring something to the conversation you bring yourself into uh that kind of a space and um, i i actually was thinking quite a lot and very deeply about the notion of attention so and, and I see it as the most valuable com commodity that we have, and and I noticed it um, with my nephews, uh, with other people that, um, if you understand that this is very 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 valuable, uh, and you have it, like everybody have the same amount of attention in a day. So it's a very egalitarian thing. So we have 24 hours to give attention. We need to divert sometimes to sleep, sometimes to other stuff. If you consume a lot of drugs, then it will lower your uh, ability of to give attention to others. Uh, if you consume a lot of alcohol, it's also lowered your, your ability to give attention. Uh, if you malnourished and don't eat that well, it's the, the, the same thing. You will lower your amount of attention, but still more or less, Everybody, even the elephant man, uh, the person who born with quite enormous deformities, has the ability to give attention to other human being. So he has like a, a sack of gold that he getting new sack every single day and he can give it to other people. And other people really want that. And I found that... Uh, profoundly with children because all they want is just an attention from a grown-up and it doesn't matter what kind of what do you do with them so you can uh, play something you can uh, make fun of them you can uh, uh, antagonize them <laughs> you can like taunt them like I, I really like to taunt small kids like how do you know that and then he starts to invent st stuff and like, like pull, like, like, of course, like, it's obvious. Of course I know that. Like, how do you know that? Like, I don't know how you know that. And then, then we'll tell you a, like interesting story, but you just need to listen to, to the story. And this exercise of you giving them attention, they, they will become your best friends in, in moments, it's really, really easy, especially with kids. And uh, it's actually the same thing, not just with people, but animals as well. I, I found it with like dogs and cats and as well. If you just like be there, and I think this is the advice that Jordan tried to uh, give in, in this first, uh, in the um, 12 Wolves of Life, like pet a cat when you encounter it in the street. Like, it's, it's this ability to just be there and pay attention to this creature and give it your attention. Uh, there's something soother, soothing to, uh, to, uh, that you get from it yourself, but just the, the practice of it is so, so valuable. Well, of course, it also relates to the concept of flow um, because when you're attending, you're not really there anymore. What do you when mean by really, that? When you're really Im immersed in attention, when you're completely attending to this one thing, like let's say the very famous example is um, a free climbers uh, that are climbing like, uh, I don't know, 300 meters without any ropes and they have to really like concentrate and tend to every single movement that they do. Um, it's, uh, they're not there anymore. They're like in some other space. Space, they, yeah. That's uh, this flow experience, and you can um, kind of elicit. I don't know if this, this is the right word, but 
uh, evoke this uh, um, this feeling on a lower level when you're attending to smaller things. Like, of course, you're not like uh, the rock climb and 300 uh, meters when you're petting that, a cat. But, but that, can... that's the opposite. That's the opposite from attention. Because when you're in the flow state, you are not free to give attention to anything else. I guess that's right, yeah. Yeah, but, but when you are, you have it in abundance, like for example, when you're walking in the street and see some person, there's nothing that taking your attention, like nothing that taking your attention. You can turn your music off, uh, pull off the glasses and be like with, with eyes to eyes connection, and just pay attention to the other person. Um, it, uh, even though you were in a flow, like it, it, it's the flow state is when an activity is taking all of your attention. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but but that's that's it's, not what you mean. Yeah, it's not exactly what I mean. Okay. Because then when you, you're so occupied with climbing or with cleaning the house or with uh, drawing, you, you in like a state of flow, which I understand, but then you are, you are not there. It's not the same thing as with attention. With attention right now, I also in, like I have this, I'm in kind of in a flow state uh, because I'm speaking. I don't think about how I'm speaking. I'm just being with you in the conversation but i uh, so there is a there is a mechanic a certain me uh, element of mechanics to to it it's, it's happening by, by its own but still i have this 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 resource of attention that i can focus i can focus on you right now and focus on the camera and focus on myself uh, i can focus on this this i don't know coffee that i'm drinking so <laughs> So, so I do have it right now, although like, I don't know. Yeah. It's, 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 it's the, I don't know how I need to tie this, this flow states and attention together, but, uh, it's good that you mention it. I don't know. Yeah. I, I wanted to go back a little bit, uh, about the, the, the festival, we, like the, and something that you said, the locality, the geographic element uh, the closeness the geographical closeness of um being in cer in certain communities is a important element um and i wanted to uh, to think about okay so we have this this community of bridges of meaning as you said correctly it's mostly an ang anglosphere um and I was thinking with Dennis yesterday and we come to a certain conclusion that maybe it's the members that came to the Bridges of Meaning, we, is, a, is, is members, like we got lead here by the YouTube algorithm mostly. So the YouTube algorithm selected us to come here. Like he selected maybe a, a few uh, uh, 10,000 people who are interested in Jordan Peterson and maybe Vaveki and, and, and Paul Van der Klee. But from all of those people, there's maybe a few thousand people that got selected to the Discord server and that pulled uh, that it's, it's pulled our attention to come here. And I was asking Dennis this question. Dennis is the new head moderator of uh, Bridges of Meaning after Joey left. And, uh, and I asked him why we don't have more French people, Russian people. Why am I, I am the only Russian speaking person in the British meaning? Like I, I cannot explain the whole history of Russia about Ukraine to every single person. In the <laughs> I, want, I want more people like me uh, to, to explain those kind of stuff. Uh, and why there aren't more? I understand there are a certain Christian leniency in this the in the corner, but still it's uh, it's it's a problem uh, because it's mostly countries 
that the level of English proficiency in them is really high. Uh, like Germany, like Netherlands, of course, all the uh, English-speaking countries like Israel. So although we don't have a lot of Israelis, but I, I, the, my explanation to it is because the, the channel is more Christian linear, so there won't be as much Israelis and Jewish people there. Um, yeah, and I and I think that this this the the fact that our corner kind of, kind of exists because yeah we get chose by an algorithm is uh, is disturbing me in some sense. But where do you see the connection from watching a YouTube video to joining a Discord server? The connection is that there is a certain like. You want there. You have a certain need to uh, to connect to this person that you've seen on YouTube. You you feel a certain urge to to be in conversation about the topics that he's presenting. But you don't think there's a, a technical connection there, like a, a really like a hardware or software no, connection no. between. No, I don't think it's that. I think uh, so. W Jordan Peterson is a global phenomenon. So the, he is. Uh, I, I I just got uh, gave my mother to listen to uh, to his biblical series that was translated to Russian, uh, which is excellent. They're really really good. So there's a lot of people in Russia who are interested in Jordan Peterson. And a lot of them are English speaking. Um, maybe not as fluent as you and me, but they still can hold them their, their, their ground. But because they don't get exposed to the English YouTube, they they not stumbling upon our corner. Understand? And, and that's and that's I think. A certain problem, um, and I, I and I really, it's a problem of locality, of language, of a certain ideas. Because now we, I'm kind of pointing about the problem that uh, the the ideas that we having in uh, with, with those like three main characters, uh, Peugeot, Van der Klee, and Vaveki, is not. Uh, jumping over language to other places, not yet, at least. Yeah. Um, which is a shame. Which is a shame. It is. It is. Yeah. But it's understandably so, I think, because um, I, I just we just talked about this yesterday. It's uh, not we, but anyways, um, it's uh, the problem is. Well, first of all, as you said, with language, not everybody, first of all, speaks any English. And then if they speak English, it's a question of, can they follow a philosophical discussion in English? Most likely not, which is unfortunate because there's so much value in this. <laughs> but uh, even, even if you would translate this, these uh, things, like the, the concepts, relevance realization and participatory knowing and I don't know what even if you would translate it like literally it wouldn't make any sense because you have to connect the concepts um, apart from their pure lexical translation to the, the, the uh, familiar concepts in the language mm -hmm. so for example um, uh, I think it was 30 years ago um, there were German monks, uh, Greek Orthodox uh, monks who were in Greece uh, before in Mount Athos, they got the, um, they were told to uh, establish a German Orthodox monastery and connect the Orthodox faith, faith to the German culture and kind of construct German Orthodoxy, which was not a thing until very recently. And um, there's a very interesting essay from one of the fathers about this, like how they approach it. And they don't just go about, you know, taking the Greek text and translating it into uh, a German version of it, but they kind of 
deep dive into the culture, literature, history, and uh, look to uh, look for um, familiar concepts to connect these uh, Christian ideas to, I even uh, recent ones. Just because you cannot take relevance realization and make it into yeah relevance realization or something <laughs> in German, I don't, it yeah, just doesn't the... make it. It sounds uh, absurd. So um, that's a really big problem and. I think that might be um, an opportunity or a call or responsibility of all the in, um, chapters, if you like, uh, the, the, the local branches mm. of uh, Bridges of Meaning, now to take this up as a, as a challenge and say, okay, now we, we need to make this available for more people, maybe, I don't know. Yeah, but the other problem, uh, which was really also curious to me, that probably, uh, well, we have a lot of members from the U.S., but not a lot of Black members from the U.S., not a lot of Hispanic uh, people from the U.S., that all of them speak English. So, like, so, so... It's a, it's this meaning crisis and this corner is, is uh, giving something to uh, Europeans slash European descent, people who in the US from European descent. And like, it's really funny that most of the people from the US is like German or, or Irish or English uh, descent. So, and working in, in that Th like through the European connection and through European mythos in some manner. Um, and I found it fascinating uh, that, that, that the, a lot of the solutions of, of the, 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 to the, a lot of problems of meaning that, uh, that we try to address and try to solve is, uh, is drawing so much, especially the Europeans. Uh, and this, uh, maybe not the Europeans, maybe specifically the Protestant Europeans. Um, although we have a lot of Catholics uh, in, in in different parts, but but still, there's a certain amount of I don't know s s something that 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 is drawing the drawing our uh, attention. Um, this European mythos in some in some in some sense. Um, for so are you, tr are you trying to figure out now what the, what the reason is why especially Europeans or those of European descent are um, de um, interested in these kind of topics? Yes, kind of. But also, first of all, I understand that the meaning crisis is striking um, Western... Um, I don't like this term, but I still use it. Uh, Western? No, but but Western countries that are uh, more or less um, economically successful uh, and uh, and well off uh, from like saturate not such saturated is not a good word like they they are they're not hungry. That that's the, the the basic idea. So you have like the northern Europeans country. You have the U.S. Uh, and uh, like this is one overlay, and the other overlay is certain like Protestant, um, those like European traditional European countries. There is a certain overlay, and for somehow that those kind of countries suffer from meaning crisis. At least I am able to point that they're suffering from meaning crisis, especially because I am not in Europe. I am outside of Europe, inside the Western sphere of influence. I'm in Israel, but we're kind of a weird Western country. Um, and, and we don't have the same meaning crisis as, as I see in the US and and. And maybe in Europe, I, I don't as familiar with European <clears throat> meaning crisis. So first of all, I try to understand 
to what cultures or to what kind of people we are interesting. And you and me came to a certain group corner uh, and then and, and community in th- with discord and with um with our exploration and there is a certain commonality to the group why is that can we expand that is it is it necessary for us to expand it maybe it's not as somebody said it's a uh, it's just this this uh this, this exploration is just a bridge. It's a bridges of meaning. But when you cross to the other side, you don't need the bridge anymore. So maybe it's, it was for a period of time of Corona, post-Corona, and, and then in five years, it won't be relevant, relevant for us anymore because you will start a family and you help, they have this, this small group of friends that you uh, live a mean, full and meaningful life and you don't have the need to have a conversation with some Israeli who maybe will manage <laughs> to, to start something with, with his own community. I think inside. I will always crave for that. <laughs> You'll crave for novelty. That's something, but that's part of your personality. That's uh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. So, something like it. I'm I'm sorry that I I'm I'm hijacking the conversation that much. No, that's all right. That's uh, that are really interesting <laughs> thoughts. But yeah, that's uh, sure. You can also you, you, we tend to approach these uh, these topics like from our perspective, but you also have to bear in mind the. The audience or potential audience, which is perhaps actually not interested in this, that yeah. might be one possibility. And uh, some people are very content with what they have, and they don't. They're not as curious as to as, as so. They don't want. Uh, are they not? They're just not interested in any philosophical discussions, any types of that, and they're not. Uh, they don't feel the need um, to explore any reasons for meaning crises in their own lives and like everything you just said. But I think it mostly is probably what you said. It's um, um, <laughs> we don't starve from hunger. I would even uh, go one step further. We don't. We, we not only not starve from hunger, but we probably die from obesity it's like we just we have too much it's uh it's great uh, up until very recently we had quite a lot i think this time from 45 to 2019 was kind of a bubble of the sort which kind of is completely surreal it's it has never happened in human history and i think it's uh i don't yeah well that's not uh, yeah maybe it's not sustainable forecasts, but it's not yeah. sustainable no maybe definitely yeah. not well i i don't know i um, I, I really don't know i think you can see it right now that it's it's crumbling maybe it will uh, kind of re uh, like uh, reconstitute yeah. itself or something but i don't know um anyways the point is that if you have if if you are satis- satisfied in the short term through i don't know uh not starving or actually having like all foods you want and having all the entertainment you want and having all the i don't know just earthly secular um opportunities then well why would you think about anything else it's like that's enough to survive like on a physical level but so i think because my... because no I, I i don't think so because in for every garden there is going to be a snake that may manage to enter and we don't know how from, from what what kind of place is going to enter and i really like that burn power that was going to be in the festival and so i th- th- because of that i'm going all over his videos and really immersing myself in in his thought and um, but his idea is that the fact that when 
we uh, and during the um, the scientific revolution um disperse f- with god and with the idea of the divine uh, we opened uh, the gates to a lot of things to enter a lot of snakes to enter this this uh, utopian garden and uh, he, like he, and he brings example one of them is uh, all the exploration that we have in the last 50 years about uh, body dysmorphia uh, so if it's enhancing your body to uh, technolo- uh, with technology uh, or it's representing your body with uh, a certain tribal uh, signatures, as we see with tattoos, uh, or it's uh, like changing physical um, elements in your body just to be presented something. So you have this people who are like all this exploration with piercing and exploration with uh, changing sex and uh, those like kind of uh, really interesting video that I watched about people who want to lose a limb, like like they want to lose a hand or a leg and they feel much more uh, complete uh, without it. And it's like doctors are doing the procedures and uh, for, for that. So So it's very interesting from that kind of perspective. Then we have the perspective of uh, uh, family and the the way that we are living in like those small, uh, very, very small intimate uh, societies. So the family structure and the changes that were introduced to that for the last um, hundred years, let's say, uh, more or less 50, as as you said, from then 49, probably. and those kind of changes, which is like, it's a very interesting, is it a snake? Is it not a snake that's going to bite us? I don't know, uh, but it's still an interesting new thing that creeping, creeping inside this, this, this bubble of wealth, a bubble of... Uh, sure, sure. Let me uh, perhaps uh, kind of correct what I said before, like or put it, frame it differently. I mean... Um, this, what I said, this this overwhelming wealth could be an explanation for two things, which are which makes it kind of a non-explanation. Because on the one hand, you can say all oh, this luxury um, s- makes you kind of content with what you have, and you, so that you don't ponder uh, philosophical thoughts. Um, on the other hand this could be the very reason for the meaning crisis because it's so material that it's just material and it kind of uh, castrates you from um, the the spiritual world. And yeah, so I'm sorry for the non-explanation. This is kind of a redundant... uh, No, that's that's excellent. Uh, René, what, what is your wish from the festival? Why, why you want to come and uh, immerse yourself in, like, why you accepted my challenge? Why you want to come to the festival? Why is it important to you in your life? What do you want to achieve? Achieve is not a good, a good word, but what do you want? What will be an excellent outcome from the festival? Or a conference. I like to call it a conference. <laughs> yeah, festival sounds a bit like uh, I don't know some some uh, DevCon <laughs> vibes. Um, well, I hope. So I'm really excited for the estuary protocol presentation because I've not heard from this before. And uh, I, if I understand it correctly, then uh, John would like to do this beforehand as well. Mm-hmm. So before the festival, uh, the, the conference yeah, starts. Yeah. Um, I, I'm in communication have... with him, so uh, I, I will organize something ah. for us uh, okay, before, great. beforehand. That's, mm-hmm. that's nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because um, I mean, I've heard about the Estuary project and also from Matthias now, he talk me a little bit about like how he approaches it um, uh, in his town but um, I would really like to participate in this like for real like not because I don't have a real good uh, 
uh, estimation of what this actually is. It just sounds like a, not just it. It sounds like um, like a get together, and we talk about things. But I feel like there's way more to it because there's a whole lot of um, uh, a whole world of best practices and experience um, involved in creating this uh, protocol from John. So I think that would be very exciting. I'm also excited to meet um, the people that are here in Discord and uh, uh, talk to them kind of in person and perhaps even uh, to make some lasting connections and to also um, to, to, um, to kind of extract some lessons for myself and perhaps even uh, so that this is a foundation for me to start uh, in in-person meetings in this uh, area where I am right now because there's no such thing here. Mm -hmm. I looked for it because uh, like when I started looking for this Discord, it's um, uh, I th also thought about like looking for the, like how um, Paul started the estuary, right? It's like um, the John Peterson meetup or something, but that mm -hmm. pretty much doesn't exist here. It's so, uh, all down in in uh, Mannheim where the, the other guys are. <laughs> it's like we all concentrated in one place in Germany. <laughs> Is Mannheim more uh, of a religious uh, center? I actually wouldn't have thought that at all. I, I asked them like, what what is? Why do you think that is that uh, are so many? Like also, if you look on the map, you can see it uh, on this um, bridges of meaning map, right? Everybody can put their pin where they live, and in Germany, it's like this southwest is like <laughs> full of pins, and um, they th they said that um, their theory might or one of the theories is um, that there's that um, the that there's the Bible Belt of Germany. This is the but Bible actually, Belt. It's not. It's not Bavaria, really. That's that's what what I would have thought. Actually. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why. why well, so well, many yeah. Well, well. Bavaria is Catholic. And, that's right. And mostly. Yeah, mostly. And as we said uh, beforehand, uh, that it seems that the Catholics have has pr less pr pr um, representation in the Bridges of Meaning community than the Protestant. And uh, if we will divide Germany between like the two Bible belts and <laughs> the Catholic one and the Protestant one. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get that. I understand why there are more people. Um, have you participated in the Dialogos practice of uh, John Lavecki on the, the, oh. the Discord server? No. You have a wish to 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 try to do that? Would you recommend that? I actually had a lot of plans to do that, but never managed to, to drag myself there. Uh, probably because um maybe I'm too afraid. That's there are one reason. I I most of the people who are in there I don't know, and I never have any conversation because they are connected more to the uh, Viveki Discord channel and less to the Bridges of Meaning. And I know there is a lot of uh, people that participate in both of them, but um, but still, like I I don't know. I it just had personal hesitation. Maybe I just lazy, but um, <laughs> but uh, I I have I I I, I do. Um, um, participate quite a lot in like those kind of conversations that I have with you. Uh, um, I actually uh, don't like that much one-time conversations. Uh, the, the, even though there, uh, I'm talking about the randos that Paul Van der Klee is doing, I don't like them that much. Um, I, I think they are good for people to get introduced into the community to to f like the, to help them to get into the community, but on their own, uh, they not good because you need repetition in order to uh, to to get to know somebody. I don't know if your silence right now is from boredom or from listening, and that's because we we've we've met each other for for a hour and a half, a hour and fifteen minutes. And that's it, and it will take few times it will take few nights 
for me to process the conversation, the interaction sure. between us until I get familiar with you. Sure. And so, so I, a big, big believer in putting the attention and seeing what's going to, to grow up from that, but a repetition of it. So it's, it's a, if we go for, to the gym to, to exercise our muscles, it's also not just exercise my tongue in speaking, but it's exercising my tongue to speaking to you which is a very unique from all the other people that I can speak to. So I, I believe in, in constant uh, like seeing each other. That was one of the reasons that I recommend and uh, recommended to have conversations before the festival, because the, I know it's not sufficient, but at least something like, at least I know, Oh, this is Rene. This is like Stefan and tomorrow I'll meet Kato, which I don't remember how, Tim, Tim, right. His name is Tim, right? Yeah. Uh, tomorrow I'll meet Tim and like I have those people who are at least I know how they react to my joke and they smiling back or something <laughs> like that. Um, but I want to ask you, are you interest, interested in exploring other elements of conversation? So for, uh, for example, um, I've met a person, um, that had done, um, a very interesting conversation with Paul van der Clay, uh, Rando. He is an older gentleman from uh, UK and we having a once a week conversation, uh, about many different stuff, but, uh, we try to figure out a better way of um, having a conversation, having a speaking practice, something like that. And we developed, uh, he, it was his idea, I, I just clinging along, uh, a slow dialogue. He calls it a slow dialogue. Uh, so slow is a, a speaker, listener, a observer, and witness. So something like that. So it's slow. Uh, we don't need the witness. We just need the uh, witness. It's something I didn't understand what witness, what his job, but basically it's a speaker, listener, and observer. And the speaker, listener, and observer is, is like kind of a, a game that three people are, are, are participating in that one is speaking his idea, the other is listening, and the, the third person is observing the situation. Uh, so it's it's plays on different levels of attention. Uh, one is you pay attention to what you say, the other, and and it's it's kind of interesting because sometimes the speaker don't want to speak that much. He want to listen. Uh, he, he sorry, he want to say something and see how it was. Uh, mm, uh, how, how it was uh, received by the listener, something like that. And uh, we are looking for member members that we can do this this slow dialogue with. Uh, and and after five minutes or ten minutes, you change roles. Uh, so sometimes you're the speaker, sometimes the listener, sometimes you're the observer. Um, and we and he said that he tried this with a few. Um, people who are working on um, environment uh, problems and those kind of things. And it had uh, a little bit of success. Um, and uh, I was really curious to try it with him and with a few other members. So I'm, I'm, I'm offering it uh, to you. Uh, Let's if, go. Let's uh, if you are interested. Okay. So Paul will be, his name is Paul. You will be thrilled uh, about it. So excellent. Yeah. I'll, I'll try to arrange it for next week. Uh, something like that. But I, I, I when, really... Go ahead. Yeah. Well, when you just uh, explained that the thought popped in my mind and then I kind of... Uh, well, the thought was, um, what's the difference between the observer and the listener? But then I realized that um, that immediately implies that the the main focus is on what's being said and perhaps also it's important what's not being said. Right. So, yeah. 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 And also it's like a, a, a breathing time. 
it's you you becoming like a person uh, like a, a, an observer of a podcast like you listen to the podcast it's there nobody can see you nobody can react to you because you close your camera or i don't know uh, if it, if it's online then then it's a different process you're still there but now you have kind of less responsibility to the conversation and then you can detach yourself from it much more so it's a it's a it's a purely consumatory participation consumatory uh what do you mean like it's it's pa- it's it's a passive participation it's like as if i really was listening to uh jre yeah. or something like it's yeah. not i'm i'm not part of the conversation i'm mm. not a bringing something to LA. I'm not uh, hey you guys should talk about this yeah now. yeah yeah you, like you don't say happen. anything you just you there as an observer and so, th- I didn't quite understand what it witness yet and uh, so so I don't know but but we are like I, I'm collecting uh, people that I w- that are interested in doing something like that and to expand because I think after the festival and after uh, there will be more estuaries uh, during this year in different parts of the world, uh, people who are organizing them uh, for you have the wish to organize one. I have a wish to organize something in Israel. I don't know in what lang- language. That's a question. Like I don't know if it should be in English or in Hebrew, like on, in Russian. Like I don't know. Like I, I need to think about it, but when those organizers of those estuary, they will become kind of, of expert in conversation an expert in group dynamic, because you will meet this group on a weekly, uh, twice a week, like uh, once every two weeks on a monthly basis, you still will get this sense of, oh, okay. So that's how group work when discussing meaning questions something like that and it will make us a lot of experts and those experts should like develop more and more and more skills and tool sets to to maybe to implement so that's the one of the wish and the hopes that i see with with the dialogos practice and the slow dialogue that we're developing and so on so Something, something, something like that. <laughs> yeah, let's see. Let's see. There's a lot of things going on right now. So yeah, but it's yeah. a good idea. Let's let's go for it. I'm excited. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you for the invitation. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Rene. I I I think we are. Uh, let's let's land this plane. <laughs> Let's land this plane. Let's land this. Let's land this plane. I, I, uh, yeah, it was it was amazing to meet you. Um, I hope we will do maybe a few conversation before the festival again. Uh, although I, I need to see, um, we will definitely see each other in the Jan Van Dunk uh, presentation and explanation to us, and uh, the online explanation. Um so yeah we'll, we'll be in touch and uh, and I'll tell you about the slow conversation slow dialogue that will uh, I'll I'll send you some messages. Great, right, thank you. But Rene it was it was tremendous. Uh, I was I, I am always nervous at the beginning like oh I need to like be a functional human being <laughs> for an hour and a half. <laughs> and uh, it's always so, so difficult, in the, especially in the morning. Like, oh, no, I cannot yeah, do picked, that. You picked quite the time, man. It's, it's because of Math- Matthias. Matthias is started it. Because I usually, when I pick times, it's in the evening. Like, you're like all the normal, com- I don't know, people starting <laughs> to do stuff. But yeah. Matthias, like, 7:30 your time <laughs> like my time 7:30 so for you it's 6:30 are you sure you're like yes <laughs> like okay challenge okay. accepted so i woke up at 5 done jump ropes like prepare myself was really uh, like enthusiastic and fire up and uh, when matthias was uh, we started the conversation i saw that he was still sleeping and i said okay i got you <laughs> <laughs> I'll run with it. 
it's great it's great it gives you a reason to you know yeah like start the day a bit early and like yeah yeah good. exactly so 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 now i'm doing like a conversation evening conversation in the morning and uh I'll, I'll, we'll see we'll see how it goes <laughs> it's a nice schedule yeah man. yeah well Yane, thank you thank you very was, much it was a pleasure meeting you man yeah you too we'll we'll keep in touch <laughs> all right bye bye bye, -bye. bye.